Um, so I, there are just a few things, if you can see all on the screen, all on the top, I have a few tabs open. And so I just wanted to, <clears throat> excuse me, touch base, you know, very quickly on, on some of the things that um, I sent out just to make sure, you know, if anyone had any questions. Um, and then we will we'll just open it up uh, for a discussion. So the first um, uh, memo that I sent out, our our wonderful uh, Deacon Modesto Cordero, the Office of Worship has been so busy. He's just so on it. Um, but he sent out the uh, Lenten regulations during COVID-19. And, you know, most of this, of course, your pastor or those who are um, really involved in liturgical ministries would, would need to um, pay close attention to some of the instructions here. But just in general, you know, it's nice to have the whole context. I, I do enjoy how Deacon Modesto gives us a, a, a greater context instead of just saying, here are instructions, you know, embedded within the particular right. So these are things that you can share, you know, cut and sort of cut and paste if you, you know, send um, information out to the families in terms of fasting, abstinence from meat and such. Um, or if your parish does this, you know, through bulletins or texts or emails, you know, whatever. This is um, the, the fullness of the instructions here. What I wanted to call our attention to, just so that no one is surprised, is this area here, distribution of ashes in the time of pandemic. So what's being shared here is really the statement that has been made by the bishops of the United States. So this isn't something that's unique to the Diocese of Honolulu that Bishop Larry, you know, has, has um you know, devised, but this is really all of the bishops together. And so um, due to the current pandemic situation, the protocol for the distribution of ashes for the Diocese of Honolulu is as followed. Um, the priest says the prayer for blessing the ashes then sprinkles the ashes with holy water without saying anything. Let me just move this a little larger here. Then he addresses all those present and only once says the formula as it appears in the Roman Missal, applying it to all in general, repent and believe in the gospel, or remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. The priest then cleanses his hands and with a face covering distributes the ashes to those deacons and lay ministers who will assist him with the distribution as described below. All ministers will then administer the ashes to the congregation by taking the ashes and sprinkling them on the head of each one without saying anything. Ministers will sanitize their hands before distribution. Then the ministers wash the residue ashes off after the last person, then sanitize their hands again. So, you know, just to get a visual sense of what is, been, is going to be going on, you know, we all see this and as Catholics, we start to chuckle like, uh oh, everybody's going to be like searching on top of their heads and then trying to make a, an ash cross on their forehead themselves. Um, but, but that's how we're going to be avoiding contact, direct contact um, with each person. The other um, practice that's going to be um, remarkably different for this year is um, this adoration of the Holy Cross and the universal prayers. So reverencing by the congregation is to be done by a profound bow or genuflection only. Kissing or touching of the cross should be avoided during the pandemic. So again, your pastor, you know, and all of those involved in liturgical ministries, ordinarily, you know, we do have the ability of people to approach the cross, but of course, during the pandemic, um, we'll uh, not be doing that. Okay, so those are the two main um, issues from this memo that I wanted to bring to your attention. Uh, okay. Any questions that anyone had about this? I was wondering what sprinkling on the head meant because I thought, 
I may have been thinking sprinkling on the forehead and I was like, okay, all of it is going to fall in front of our faces. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so sprinkling on the head, when I saw you do I this, think... I said, oh, okay, that makes sense. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, poor Modesto, he, uh, you know, because he's the one that gets all, receives all of the questions. And so it's, you know, how, how much water, I mean, you can't really put mix the ashes with water for distribution like that. Cause you just like get clumps of stuff on people's heads. So, <laughs> so I guess there will be no, it won't be as wet, you know, as they, they typically are in distribution. So, so it, it, it will be um, very interesting. Um, and again, it's it, distribution of ashes. The, these are really great times for catechesis because, you know, what is, distribution of ashes ash wednesday is so popular even among non-catholics uh, our churches are full and um ash wednesday is not a holy day of obligation but as many people come for ash wednesday masses as like for christmas easter you know? so it's really a phenomenon um that offer that uh, affords us an opportunity for catechesis the, the protestant churches you know um have in have other kinds of practices where they'll do distribution of ashes um, outside the context of the mass. So, you know, so in case you see or you hear a lot of things, well, how come we can't just go out to the parking lot and do this? And, you know, uh, um, someone was asking, well, can we have the families burn their palms from last Palm Sunday, you know, at home and, um, you know, do, you know, distribute ashes at home because if they don't want, if they still, um, don't can't come to mass because of the pandemic. Can we do that? Well, yeah, you know, it's it. We we always um, for us the practice of distribution of ashes is always within the context of the mass. Um, is it sacrilegious to distribute ashes? You know, do your own sort of blessing at home? No, but that it shouldn't be um, considered as the equal substitute, you know, for, of course, um, celebrating it in the context of the mass. So again, it, it, it is a good document. It's really great um, to um, help families understand what um, Ash Wednesday is all about. Excuse me a moment. Let me, um, Bonnie, just to let you know, I did receive your text. So sorry. Um, thanks. I, we know you're listening in, um, but without uh, a mic or camera. So thank you for your message. Um, Jane, I have a question. Yes. yes. Can you self um, cross yourself with the ashes? Um, or is it has to be done by like the priest or whoever is helping the priest? How would you obtain the Help ashes? The like if they were to pass out little cups with ashes in it, each one gets a cup and you put your finger in it and you self administer. We were thinking about all of that, but again, it's the really the com communal um, aspect um, for for the Catholic Church that we believe in. So, um, in the same way that we don't do, you know, individual cups for for um, the body of Christ, you know, the precious body of Christ, mm -hmm. you know, the body of Christ and the precious blood, um, mm -hmm. we we are all we distribute from a communal. Um, vessel. So yeah, that, that's why, you know, we were just waiting to see what the, what the official instructions were, you know, from the, um, from the uh, office of um, worship. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, so that would be it. Just a thought because it just seems so easy to do it, but I was thinking of yeah, how it would be in the context of that you say communal in the context of that the priest is doing it with us and whatever, you know. Right. right. That's a question. Yeah, that's, yeah, that, that is a good question. We were throwing out all kinds of stuff. So, um, but this is what we um, was settled upon. Um, I'm sorry, let me just mention, uh, Bonnie, if you wanted to add anything, you can, um, there's a chat option. So if you wanted to ask questions or make any comments, you can go ahead and enter them in the chat function, okay? Um, thank you. Any other questions about that? Okay, thank you. 
Um, I have a question. Mm -hmm. okay, so Bishop has given the, um, what do you call that? From attending mass, the permission. Dispensation, to, the dispensation. right, dispensation. So it's going to go to Shrove Tuesday, right? Correct. For right now, it's it's through right um, the, yeah. the Tuesday before Ash Wednesday, mm -hmm. um, because he's always trying to keep it, keep the windows very tight, you yes. know, and he may extend it after that, but um, doesn't want to make, you know, some sort of longer uh, statement of, you know, throughout all of Lent and such, you know, we're all praying that as the vaccine uh, uh, programs um, expand that we're eventually going to be able to get back to mass um, mm -hmm. more sooner. So, but, you know, we, you know, I sort of expect that, you know, Ash Wednesday just being a few weeks away, holy smokes, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> that it, that it will, that the dispensation will likely be extended. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So, okay, so that's this one. Um, uh, Modesto also sent out this memo on the right of election and the list of catechumens. And I know each of you are involved in this. And so this should be a very familiar document to you. It's similar to what he sends out every year. Um, but the main um, message that he asked again is that if, you do not have elect to please, um, where is this there? Even if you don't have elect to please fill out this form and check off none. Yeah. So he just needs to be sure that every parish is accounted for, even if there are, um, are no elect. Oh, here it is. Um, please send your li list, uh, the email to him. If you don't have any catechumens for election this year, send the form anyway, making a mark in the box labeled none. And that way he's sure um, that your parish is accounted for. Okay. Any questions about this one? Okay, thank you. So no, we'll um, uh -huh. Sure. I had um, emailed Father Mark Gantley, the, um, he's a canon lawyer. Yes. Right. Um, about the possibility of if one of our um, catechumens can be separated from being baptized and save the other um, sacraments for mm -hmm. um, when we receive confirmation because families receiving confirmation in Eucharist at the mass like one or two weeks later. Mm. And he was saying that no, you can't separate the sacraments, <laughs> but you can have that person receive it at the mass that we hold for confirmation, as long as we let Bishop and Vicar General know. Oh, I that's pretty neat. So, um, so to be baptized and baptized um, and yes. all three. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was. That Thank was you for sharing that. Yeah, I, that's the first time I heard that. Ordinarily, uh, Father Mark Gantley will copy me on those kinds of responses, but um, mm -hmm. that's nice. Yeah, I thought that yeah. was. So we're thinking about it because our RCIA person is like, well, you know, preparing them for the vigil. You know, kind of thing. So I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Huh. But our, okay. our confirmation mass we're requesting close to Easter. So um, maybe one or two weeks following Easter. So, you know, the wait is not too much. I thought right, that was pretty right. neat. I yeah. That was pretty neat. yeah, very nice. I'll have to go back to the norms and see if that was embedded someplace. And I just um, was intellectually lazy and didn't see it. <laughs> I don't think you're intellectually lazy. Intellectually lazy. <laughs> I, I mean. <laughs> you're on it, Jane. <laughs> Nice. Thank you very much. That's that's really good information um, for me to know. Okay. Um, then just a couple more. This one is brand new. I haven't sent it to any out yet because I just received it from Modesto yesterday. <clears throat> and th these are again things that are familiar to you: confirmation and first Holy Communion guidelines for the Diocese of Honolulu. And this is just a reiteration of what is embedded in those the new norms that we that were um, distributed when we began implementing original order. 
So, um, you know, again, I, I, just pardon me. I know that this is um, uh, familiar territory with all of you, but since this has just been such an unusual past year, just to remind ourselves um, that faculty for the for the priests, um, confirmation and first Holy Communion will be celebrated by the bishop and scheduled with the office of the bishop. Um, so you contact uh, um, Brendan Porrick, yeah, to get on the bishop's calendar. So the bishop or the vicar general will administer confirmation at the first Holy Communion Mass to those children between the age of seven, seven and 17, as well as adults as decided by the pastor. And this has been really beautiful. I know many of you have shared wonderful stories about parents who, you know, have not been confirmed themselves. And, and when their younger children are preparing for confirmation, the question arises like, oh, you know, for some odd reason, I was never confirmed. And, and so it's so beautiful to see um, parents, you know, uh, typically, at, you know, after all of the children have been confirmed that, that they also come up uh, to be confirmed. So, um, that, that's a decision that can be made by your pastor. Um, the next, the pagella of faculties issued by bishop, all, all pastors, parochial vicars, and priests and chaplains of ethnic communities and of mystical rose oratory have the faculty to confirm on any Sunday of the Easter season from the Easter vigil until Pentecost, those 13 years of age or older who were baptized Catholics as children. So, um, this particular statement here may be helpful to parishes that have many, many confirmandi, um, older, especially the older um, uh, children, youth, you know, teens. Um, and because of the pandemic and social distancing, you know, having that mass with the bishop, um, we can't fit everyone in the church. So this is one option that the parish may exercise if, if the um, older child has already received First Communion and needs confirmation only, that the pastor may, you know, confirm during the Easter um, season. Um, and then just instructions on how um, the priests are to obtain, uh, obtain um, faculty. And here's Brendan Porrick's information and for scheduling confirmation and First Holy Communion. Let's see, this one, um, I, I think all of you here on the call, you've got this down, um, but again, as a reminder, uh, before getting married or when applying to be a candidate for ordination of religious life, canon law requires sacramental certificates to be provided as proof that a person received the sacraments and is free to take on a, a life obligation. However, universal canon law and diocesan norms do not require collecting sacramental certificates from sponsors. The role is on a different level of significance and in fact, sponsors are not even strictly required. Canon 872, of the Code of Canon Law starts with the phrase, insofar as possible, a person to be initiated is to be given a sponsor. So if it is not possible to find a qualified sponsor, then a person may be confirmed without one, or the parish may assist in providing a sponsor. Nonetheless, most of the time, it will be possible to have a sponsor to certify the sponsor is qualified, simply have the prospective sponsor sign the form titled Cert Certification for God's Parents Sponsors for Baptism and or confirmation that has been designated for use in our diocese. And so here's a uh, fillable form. So again, this should really ease your um your duties, your list of things to do, you know, that the sponsor does not have to provide um, a certificate of baptism. Um, it's encouraged to ask the baptism sponsor if available to serve as sponsor for confirmation, again, preserving the, the theology of, and the connection of baptism to confirmation. Um, otherwise, a different sponsor may be chosen. Okay, so and then the rest are, you know, this is stuff that you're um, familiar with. The certificate of confirmation, um, we, you know, if, if you need, if your pastor needs one. And 
think everything else recording the confirmation if you if you you know don't already know we do have fillable forms for confirmation online just go ahead click on that and you can you know type in the names of the confirmandi um, that is a combined conference we have confirmation and then combined confirmation and first holy communion just to make it easier for you as reminders, face coverings will be worn at all times by those participating in the Mass during liturgical celebrations. For those ministers with respiratory issues, the use of a face shield instead of a face mask is highly recommended. If a face shield is used by the candidate for confirmation, it should be temporarily removed for the anointing with chrism. Proper social distancing should be maintained at all times. Okay, so those are just, you know, the, the basic um, um, areas of focus for us. Any questions? <laughs> Let me make sure no one's coming in on the ch chat. Okay. Okay. No, these wow. are really good reminders, Jane. No, these are really good reminders. Oh, thank and, you. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Even I have to go back to read the norms, like, okay, what did we say now? Um, and um, let's see. Okay, so the final one is uh, this one, the, the COVID vaccine memo. This one was issued by Dara. And let's see. So, Vicki, you don't have a school. Shirley, there's not a school. Bonnie, Faye. Yeah, okay, so... So the, those of us who are on the call today do not have a parochial school. So um, uh, the, the, the main statement that I need to you know, make about this is that we as the Diocese of Honolulu, we follow the State of Hawaii Department of Health um, regulations governing the distribution of the vaccine. So who is eligible to receive is not something that we um, uh, make a decision on, it really is us being bound to follow what the Department of Health states. So as you know, right now, um, those who are teachers um, are and, and um, formally affiliated with the school. So if you're faculty member, staff member, you're a regular volunteer, um, if the school, uh, if, if the school defines you as that person who is officially affiliated with the school, then you are, um, then you can receive the vaccine. So some of the questions that I receive are, um, well, what if I am a catechist or a director or a coordinator of religious education, but I go into the school once a week to help with their catechesis of the Good Shepherd atrium, or I go in, you know, once a week or regularly to teach a class, you know, to the students. Um, if that is the case, then the conversation is between you and the principal. And so the principal will be able to verify that you indeed are, you know, pro provide a regular service to the school and that you should be approved to receive um, the vaccine you know, in, in this um, particular time. So that's how it's working now. So, you know, so otherwise this, um, this um, these frequently asked questions are pretty much straightforward. Um, even clergy members, um, unless they are related to the regular operations of the school, they have to wait until their age or, or ministry category is called forward. Um, of course, hospital hospital chaplains and such, the hospitals are verifying um, whether or not the clergy person will be able to, or, you know, the lay person, because this is um, ecumenical and interreligious, whether that person is eligible to receive the vaccine at this time. Okay. So, you know, just in general, it's not us, the diocesan office, who, who makes the, um, the, the call for eligibility. We're following Department of Health um, protocols. All right. So any questions about this? Okay. 
Great. Well, let me uh, stop my screen here. Get us back. So that's that's all of the informational stuff. Um, but before we part company, I just thought that um, it would be nice just to sort of just go around and get caught up. Well, what's you know anything that you'd like to share? Anything that's happening? And Bonnie, if you wanted to either put it in the chat or text it to me, and I'll read it. Um, would would love to hear from you. So Shirley, I'm going to pick on you. <laughs> Would you like to start? How's it going over there? Hope you have to remember to unmute, Shirley. Hmm. OK. Can you hear me now? Yes. There you are. Um, let's see. At our day Saris, we're we're doing fine so far, uh, except that um, our gospel weeklies have not arrived yet. Oh no. Yeah. So um, we're kind of working with um, you know, like now I told them that we start reconciliation, you know, starting the classes instruction sheet. So I had some books you know, that we've had over the years. So I said, in the meantime, just use these until our gospel weeklies come in because I even um, uh, called uh, the Flum company to find out, okay, what's going on to our order, you know, and they said that we're checking on it. And so um, I haven't gotten it yet. So we're kind of working on what, what we have available. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, Shirley, this whole sort of fallout between with the U.S. Postal Service and, you know, yeah. very busy Christmas season, we seem to be really um, still trying to catch up. Uh -huh. Gosh. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. gosh. Um, from yeah. Bonnie in the chat, uh, Bonnie shares that um, we're really into Flipgrid and... Alive in Christ, AIC lessons, <laughs> Alive in Christ lessons. Um, uh, the families are involved and have a great response. Our first Zoom meeting with parents for sacrament children is on Sunday. We'll let you know how that goes. <clears throat> now, Bonnie is being very um, humble here. I have been tuning in, okay, dropping in occasionally to what they're doing over there at St. Jude via Flipgrid. And if you're not familiar with Flipgrid, it's um, it's a free program, but they use um, um, our Sunday Visitor Alive in Christ series and the electronic version of that. And so Bonnie uh, pulled together her catechetical team to build the lessons online with, with the help of our Sunday visitor. But also you have to sort of really um, personalize them. And what's really neat about this particular platform is that it is um, video based in terms of response, uh, uh, the catechesis and then response from the families. And um, I, I think Bonnie, you, you you don't have your microphone on, so I'm just going to pick on you anyway. I think at some point I would like Bonnie to to do an in-service for us on Zoom and just, you know, let us peek into all of these Flipgrid rooms. Um, because like for next year, I think that the hybrid sort of lessons, you know, we, we can still continue to do that, even though, you know, we are going to be able to gather in person. What I'm struck by, um, and they are as well, um, is... The, the parents' involvement, particularly dads, I was struck by, very touched um, by the dads willing to record these short videos of praying with their children, of sharing insights of what the faith means to them. Um, and, you know, there was this one that I was, it was just really so 
touching where this, this little girl, she was like seven or eight years old, sitting on her dad's lap and the dad is praying with her and she's got this smile on her face, just sm- grinning from ear to ear. Um, and it's that kind of um, positive association with prayer, positive association with sharing the faith in the families is what is what strengthens the domestic church. Um, I mean, this, these dads and even these moms are the St. Joseph's, you know, of the families. <laughs> and so um, uh, not that they haven't had, you know, there, there's also some challenges with that in terms of getting everybody to participate um, at, at a level that we hope. But um, this really has broken open some possibilities and grown skill levels for catechists. So, um, so thank you, Bonnie, for doing that. Um, I, I will get back in touch with you, Bonnie, ab- about indeed um, sharing this um, via Zoom um, with others. So um, Faye or Vicki? Okay. Um- at St. George. Sorry, Shirley, we received our gospel weeklies on Tuesday. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And I was shocked because we were late also um, in getting the booklets, but thankfully they're here. We are doing um, first and third Sundays face-to-face and the others on Zoom. And the first and third Sundays are pretty neat in that. Um, the children will come to the early class and then stay for the 930 mass with their families. And those who are coming after class, like the middle and high school, will come to the 930 mass and then stay for their class. So um, although our numbers are small, we really do have a dedicated bunch of people who are coming. <clears throat> um, and I still, you know, email the families to say we're thinking of you and you can just jump in. You know, even if it's January, you can still jump back in. So, um, yeah, we're moving forward um, slowly, but faithfully. We're, we're just trying to keep the kids interested. So um, that's St. George. That's what we're doing right now. That's really nice. Thank you. Um, because what you described, Vicki, seems like something that you could continue, you know, even after we're able to gather. Um, we're, yeah, we're trying, we're trying to get the people back into the pews, mm-hmm. you know, um, those, those who are faithful to coming to church, their kids are already coming to Sunday school. We're trying to get the others and, and I haven't heard a peep from them, <laughs> but, and I did mention this before we started a Kupuna in prayer partnership with our youth in RE. And even though they're not in Sunday school, I included all of our RE kids <clears throat> in this Kupuna in prayer program. And I've received such beautiful thank yous from the kupuna saying i am so thrilled in such a dire time to have someone praying for me and um we i did have an offering for them to be remembered at christmas mass and they were thankful for that it's it's been pretty nice and and the kids are like oh i want to send them a christmas card or i want to send them pictures so it's not everybody i said you know you don't have to pray for them every day you know it doesn't have to be a daily thing but remember them in prayer Mm -hmm. so that's a pretty nice program that started we still get, we, again, we still need, need to touch base with everybody in RE and mm, I'm praying that it happens <laughs> this year that mm. they start coming mm-hmm. back. Mm-hmm. Anyway. That is really beautiful because those are the kinds of comments that I've been hearing as well from Kupuna is, you know, I can't get to mass, even if I wanted to, you know, so this, that isolation, you know, to, so to know someone is praying for them and reaching out. Um, I heard from a few people just saying, you know, I'm the only Catholic in my house. And so knowing that other people are praying for me or being able to go online um, to do, you know, to, to, to talk to other Catholics is so important to me. So, you know, I really um, appreciate what you're describing in terms of getting the generations together, certainly respectful of our culture as well. Yeah, that. That is important. And from Father Raymond, our pastor, I think it kind of was an epiphany for him that although he knows the kupuna are important, he didn't realize it until he really got feedback from the kupuna about how they're still thought of, you know. Mm. So um, 
you should come and everybody you're invited to come to St. George to visit our meditation garden, which Father Raymond has put together behind the church. It's just a beautiful area where he's put the stations and saints and people go to pray the rosary and yeah, just come onto our site and come visit our meditation garden. I will, I'll be there. That's a guarantee. Thank you. Thank you All for right. that invitation. That's great. Thank you. Hi, Faye. Hi. Okay, let's see if I can turn on the video. Okay. Hey, so I'm you in are. the other office. Hey, hey. hey How's everyone? it gorgeous? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so we were originally um we've been doing Zoom um since uh I started the year actually uh, I flipped it. I started with the parents first. <laughs> a whole month. I did a whole talk story series with the parents, um, which was unexpected. And they were like, why us? And I was like, why not? So <laughs> I'll take a, give it right Love back it. to them. Love um, it. So I think I spent uh, August and September, like one week in August, and then like all of September with them. And then I officially started with the children in October, up until October to November, we were focusing on prayer. Um, because I, I noticed the, the students that we had since I took over two years ago, the prayers were kind of mm, kind of not all there. So I wanted to focus the month on, on prayer. Um, and I used a bunch of resources uh, from Loyola, St. Mary's Press, and Sadlier. Um, and they were sending me a lot of stuff too. And then we focused on Advent things. Um, a lot of the... Uh, the things that I think oh, were missing in their knowledge of faith was uh, a lot of liturgical things, mm. uh, liturgical seasons. Um, they weren't familiar with the calendar. So it, it's kind of like back to basics. I kind of was telling the parents that this is a great opportunity to go back to basics. So I told them that was my goal. This, um, this year, this uh, religious ed year was to kind of go back to the basics, but still go move forward. Um, and so we've been doing a lot of uh, reflection on the Sundays, Sunday readings and, and whatnot. Um, uh, and then we were supposed to start hybrid actually this January, but because of the number of um, the rise in cases and whatnot, um, I think Father Nain and I, we discussed um, alongside with the Tongan community that I think we're gonna stick to virtual for now. Um, possibly, um, I don't know, We. we we were thinking once a month in person, but you know, it's kind of, yeah. So yeah. there's a lot involved in when you're doing it in person. And mm -hmm. I, I just don't want to, you know, we want the focus to be the families this year. Uh, for me, it's just how do we be accommodating to the parents and to the children um, mm -hmm. and, and make it as easy as possible um with the with this process and transition and whatnot so we're back to zoom um so i i was gonna start the curriculum this month but i thought mm, Faye, it's kind of a lot <laughs> so um i they really the children that i have uh currently they really love connecting with the gospels uh, gospel readings, uh, not just the gospel readings, but the other readings too, on Sundays. So I was thinking about uh, shifting um, from the actual curriculum books into the gospel weeklies, uh, because they all receive their sacraments already. Um, and so I think this is a good refresher. And they really love reading stories of the Bible. And they're really mm. good, great storytellers too. So then I'm, I'm thinking of shifting to the gospel weeklies just for the duration of this from January to about uh, May. So just mm -hmm. for this crunch time. So, yeah. Yep. Thank you. So, um, you know, I, you, you, you wear, like all of us, you know, we, we all wear many hats, but could you share a little bit also about how things are going as campus minister? Oh, yes. Okay. So uh, a few months ago I was, um, um, hired and as... you don't know yeah oh I'm sorry yeah give you the background sorry sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay so uh I I'm the um coordinator for religious ed at St. Augustine Church in Waikiki uh I am also I was recently hired as the uh part-time campus minister at Newman Center Holy Spirit Parish in Manoa so it's um college campus ministry 
Um, so we have about 20,000 plus students. Of the 20,000 plus students, about 10% are Catholic. So my job is to reach those 2,000 plus um, students. Uh, but so far um, with the pandemic, uh, I mean, we have about, I'm, I'm so grateful. We have at least about 15 to 20 students, both undergrad and graduate students. And I think before the pandemic, oh, we had a little bit more like 40 or 50, but I'm just, ble we're just blessed to have at least, you know, I, I told Father Alfred, if we have one, I'm, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, we have more than one, so, which is great. Um, and so because, um, the campus is uh, completely closed uh, and everything is virtual. Um, we kind of had to think outside of the box a little bit. Um, and I know uh, father wanted to get the students out of the dorms, but this past semester uh, when I was kind of observing, they're, they're kind of a little scared to come out. Mm. So with the students that we have, I told them to go be my little spies and find out <laughs> what's going on in the dorms. Um, and so they just kind of come out to eat, to shower, to just walk around and then they just go right back in. And I'm like, mm. Mm. so my goal this semester is to kind of just, <laughs> it's twofold is to start walking on campus <laughs> for my own health benefit and to kind of see and, and talk story and then kind of meet everybody and be nearly a little bit about what's going on. Um, but we've had, uh, we started programming um, and I came in about little right after the semester started in September, mid-September. And so what they, what, they completely stopped everything because of COVID, um, because of the pandemic and because UH was, I mean, it's their, not completely shut down, but they don't have anything on campus um, except for like labs or whatever. Um, <clears throat> so everything is completely online. So we, he was like, how are we going to do this? Um, I said, well, we can do something. So uh, we used to have Sunday dinners at the, on Sundays uh, after the following the Sunday uh, student masses, Sunday evenings. And so they stopped the dinners because we can't congregate. I was like, well, can't we just give them the food and they can go. So mm. there you go. So we do student dinner takeout. <laughs> mm. um, and then we used to have programming on Wednesdays. It used to be a candlelight mass, 9 p.m., uh, mass and which the students loved and I went to some of those and 9 p.m. mass it's actually really cool yeah <laughs> um, well he wanted to revamp that and add a little bit more not just having mass but what are some other things that we can incorporate so um, I went on social media and I've been kind of posting like almost yeah every week kind of two or three times a week um, and I came across other Newman Center um, uh, groups Oh, and kind of connecting to them and what we're doing uh, and what they were doing and what ideas we can generate and whatnot. So one um, Newman Center in Fresno, I think, or yeah, I think in Fresno, was doing some kind of stream night. So it was scripture, testimony, reconciliation, Eucharist, adoration, and music. So stream, S-T-R-E-A-M. Hmm. And I thought, wow, and they do it, all of that in one night. I was like, whoa, okay, that's a little much. Uh, so... I, I was like, Father, Father, we got to do something like this. We got to do a stream night, but let, let's do let's do little snippets. Let's do scripture one week. Uh, instead of testimony, I was like, mm, what about theology? Because a lot of the, the what Newman kind of needed was, it was missing the theology aspect, the catechetical part. Um, and I guess it was, the pressure was, oh, because it's a parish, the parish will take care of it. I'm like, mm, no, that's part of the chemistry. So... So we, we have our stream nights we started um, in October. Um, so it's scripture, theology talks, uh, reconciliation, Eucharist, adoration, mass. So every week we have a little bit of, so this week we have, uh, we started it up again yesterday. So it's scripture with a little bit of music because uh, I'm a musician. So I have to have a little tinkle of music. Um, and then next week we're going to simultaneously have the mass as Bishop requested for the vigil for the March for Life. So we moved our stream night from Wednesday to Thursday just for next week. So we're going to have um, the the E part of the stream. So the uh, Eucharist, we're going to have mass and then uh, holy hour. We're going to have adoration. So each week we have like scripture and then there's like theology talks. And I know Deacon Modesto was one, our first theology um, talker. 
And he did a wonderful job connecting the Veterans Day theme um, to Thanksgiving ish. Mm. Yeah. So he, it was, it was so great. The kids loved it. Um, and so we do uh, uh, reconciliation and mass one day, and then we do adoration and music. And then we, we kind of jumble up, uh, jumble it up a little bit. So I'm, I focused um, on that stream night, I think for the fall semester. And then this semester, we're going to kind of expand it a little bit more um, and try to see if we can get the kids out of the dorms. So yesterday we had about three more new students come. So yay, the more the merrier. Nice. I'm, I'm more of a quality as opposed to quantity. You know, where two or three are gathered. Hey, if I'm there, if father's there, there and then Dan is always our cheerleader so Danny Bina is always there <laughs> and you know it, you know it's just trying to get these kids that it's okay and for me uh, I'm not going to let COVID or this pandemic stop me from thinking of what we can do because it can't or else we're going to be stuck so I told father you know you, you you have to you have to accept what creativity I have <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be a little crazy with my creativity and I think that's what we need to do just stir things up we're not going to let mm. COVID dictate what, how we should do things. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think we can work around it, um, not really get rid of it um, now, uh, but we, I, we definitely can work around it. And so um, like we, they, used, they used to do like activities, um, social activities, like outside. And I was like, well, there's limited things we could do. And I said, well, we could carp, we can carpool and we could do uh, around the Island. We could do like a, um, uh, church hopping so where we have that scheduled um, I think next month we were going to do like visit the different churches and possibly the different mission churches and then yeah so make it an adventure kind of a thing so we're I'm just trying to be creative um, we're um, we I just had a conference call with uh, the people from focus um, and we're gonna hopefully Cross your fingers, we're going to have some um, digital missionaries to come and help us uh, with uh, Bible study and faith sharing. So um, we're, I'm excited about that. Nice. Um, and bringing back that spiritual um, seed back into campus ministry. Um, and we're, I'm currently working with um, Jeremiah Carter, who is the director of campus ministry at Shamanad, because I'm like, okay, hey, we need to collaborate. We need to I can't just, you know, we need to do something. I'm, I'm all about, you know, connecting. I'm a like, le I'm like Legos. I have to connect with people <laughs> in order to move forward. So, yeah. So sorry, that was kind of all over the place, but yeah. I love, you know, <laughs> that's so inspiring. And I, you know, and I asked um, Faye to share in that ministry because when we think about our ministry to parents, this is the age, you know, some of them are young, you know, they're still, you know, undergraduates, but still some are having children young and, and those are the graduate student age and such. And so when we listen to what Faye is um, sharing with us, what we're picking up in terms of how do we, you know, what's the ministry for parents? What's the ministry for families? Um, that's where their heads are at. Um, just a couple of things listening to Faye. When I'm planning retreats, there were a few retreats um, that I did, and the, the parents of young children said to me, can we please have a retreat that starts like at dinner time and then goes, you know, maybe like through sunset? And Because we, a Saturday morning, no, that, no, <laughs> we won't, we can't come. It's just too much for our family. So. I was struck by that, that still, um, when they're in their 20s, when they're in their 30s, they like the the evening, you know, 8 o'clock mass, 9 o'clock me. I'm like winding down. I already have my book in my hand. <laughs> I'm not going out. Um, but that's that's what, you know, what they prefer. And so, you know, how do we minister to them? And and then what uh, Faye is saying again is back you know, sort of like Vicky, what you were saying, this back to basics kinds of things, um, scripture, liturgy, you know, what, what, what is, who, who are we as church? Who are we? What, what is this beautiful thing? And, and so, um, 
uh, thank you, Faye, for, for sharing along those lines, because those really it draws a straight line to um, things that we c must consider in our ministry to families, you know, and so when we put out surveys, you know, and we ask them, you know, or, you know, to try to put together um, ministries, those are some key um, aspects. So thanks for sharing that uh, with us. And we'll continue to ask you to um, share all of the great stuff that's going on between you and Jeremiah. Holy smokes, we'll we'll be um, we'll be growing faith in young adults and into their lives, you know, for sure. Um, we see Jerry. Hi, welcome. You're muted, Jerry. Did you want to say hi to everybody and get us uh, caught up on what you're doing? Hi, everyone. Hi, Jerry. Hi. Wait, let me see if I can go on. Yeah. Hey, hi. There you are. <laughs> hey, lovely. Hi. Hello. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year. We're yeah, just well, we're just wrapping up and so doing a round table of um, how it's going in your parishes. Oh, okay. We're doing fine. Um, actually, we didn't even stop. We we continued on, but then we started um, having new registrations, and it's really going really great. The only thing is that uh, we don't have classrooms. We're using the um, we're using the two meeting rooms and the whole church for classrooms because we won't be able to use the school. Yeah, but then we're we're fine. We have. Right now, close to about, oh my gosh, about 170 children that registered, and we have approximately 90 to receive their sacrament of confirmation. So I called Deacon Modesto and I said, how are we going to do this again? So I guess, you know, we're going to have to do the same thing, but we're doing fine. And you know, what is really good is that the other catechists that were teaching before, they have their children uh, now in high school and in elementary. So they're coming back and they're, they're um, teaching again. So that's fine. We're, we're doing okay. Mm -hmm. oh, that's wonderful. So the reason you can't use the school buildings is because they need to protect their bubbles, you know, for... Yes. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. But praise God, you know, they had, they had their recollection um, last week, Saturday. So Bev, the principal was very kind enough to let us use at least six of the, um, six of the, uh, the classes for just that one time. And it was, a was kind of really hard for us because we had to divide our, uh, students. So we have like probably 32 in each room. We could put only 17 and 16. So we had to split the, the teachers, but, um, uh, we're okay. We're okay. They're okay with, with the church. I just need to buy a lot of um, boards, <laughs> flipboards so that they could use it, you know, to study, but we're doing fine. Mm -hmm. That's good to hear. Well, thank you for joining us, Jerry. Um, I did record this session, so, you know, you can just sort of go back. Um, I just went over some of the, the recent memos that were issued, um, you know, from, particularly from Deacon Modesto. Um, but I'm sure, you know, you're, you're very familiar with those con the contents of all of those. So, but if you have any questions, Jerry, you know, you know how to reach me. We are. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, so any, any other closing remarks before we um, I just wanted to make a comment to Faye. Um, actually, I wanted to tell Faye to tell Father Lane Aloha from Vicky De Silva. He was our kahu when, um, with our halal in traveling with us. Um, so please tell Father Lane aloha Faye from me. But I wanted to also say that when Faye said we had to go back to basics and I have a new girl in school and um, she is um, academically, I think she's, she's very well read, but her basics are not there. But when um, Faye talked about going back to basics, I thought sometimes um, it gets so willy nilly that you don't know where the basics are and what they are for what the needs are, because there's so many things to cover prayer, mm -hmm. mass, you know, just um, sacraments and, you know, all mm -hmm. of these things. So um, it gets it gets to the point where, OK, you got to just pick and choose what they need and just stick with it and then just lay that foundation and you move from there. 
So um, yeah, it's, it's hard when you see them only once a week. And with Jerry having that many, oh my gosh, Jerry, God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> and, that, and that's half of what you usually have right? yes <laughs> but anyway yeah i just praise everyone for the work that you do in your parishes and to jane for keeping us all together and on the track yes thank I always you <laughs> feel, i always feel like am i doing the right thing you know what should i but feel confident that because of the faith you have in us that we're doing all right so thank you jane for your thank time. you jane Thank you. Yeah, you know, really, I so admire all of you. Um, but I, you know, I'm I'm thinking about what you just said, Vicky. And yes, it is overwhelming because our, the church is, the the, the 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 teachings of the church are so complete, are, are so comprehensive. You know, and 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 Christ is the truth, the way, the life, the truth, and and the complete truth. <laughs> and so it is like, how do you start? And 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 so much of that is. Um, where, you know, and we, we use this, we make this statement all the time, wherever they're at. And um, the, the role for us as catechists um, in our own ongoing formation is to always be able to, to grow so that when we're listening, we're making those connections. You know, as an example, like everything that's been going on with my dad and you all have just been so beautiful in your response. Thank you so much. Um, but but what I'm what I'm seeing out of there are, oh, um, you know, the um, mass intentions. You know, we'd like to pray for your dad. Oh, here's scripture here. Here's this is this. And it wasn't like in a preachy way. Oh, Jane, you should read this. It was a. Um, I, I want to say, and I, I, I am not, I don't dance hula well, <laughs> but, you know, it, it really is like offering like this and not like, you know, here, here, take this. It is, it, you all beautifully opened your hands and offered this, these beautiful and unique and special gifts, the best of what you had where I was at. And what that does for me is to go, huh, maybe I can read a little bit more because I hold responsibility as well for my own formation in faith. But what you have done is you drew me further or you at least oriented me, you know, turn, turn this way. And, and, and for, for those, you know, go, talking about going back to basics, it's, Sometimes, you know, they'll come back to it and say, you know what, you said this to me one time and we're like, did we say this? We don't even remember. Was I there? You know? um, and so we never know. It's, it's just that something that we said when they were sharing something of their lives with us and then we responded to them in a very um, gentle way that helped them to realize that Christ is accompanying them on a Christ came and sacrificed his life this whole Paschal mystery is because he loves us <laughs> and he walks with us and he is with us in, present in, in the real presence, you know, and through the Christian community and in the word. And so sit with the word for a little while, you know, you're going through this, oh, you know, this particular reading, we were just talking about fishermen and, you know, this particular reading, <laughs> you know, sit with it for a little while. And so it may seem sort of, willy-nilly but I think that that's that's exactly it that's exactly who we are called to be in that role of evangelization and then the catechesis follows where all of this stuff when they finally sit down for classes it makes sense because you have connected their daily lives with it in some way so um so, so I'm just here affirming what you're all saying that, yeah, a lot of times it feels like, ah, are we accomplishing anything? Are we built? Is anything being built? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, because Christ is the architect, you know, and, and so we're, you know, put, putting together these pieces, um, one building at one stone at a time, one piece of wood at a time. So, 
So thank you. And if you all have any um, recommendations uh, for in-services that you'd like, um, I know many of you, if not all of you, participated in some way or at least watched afterward Father Phil Ganier's presentation on the new directory. I thought he was fantastic. Um, and he wants to do more for us. I said, well, I'll give you a rest a little while, you know, maybe later on in the year, but certainly, um, you know, we have other topics. Um, I will be sending you next week information. My region 11, we're doing a, we're offering um, a Lent retreat um, with uh, Michael Ruziki. Uh, and if you're not familiar with him, he's been at LA Congress. He's all over. He is just excellent. So we will be um, um, having a an online Lenten retreat for you. It is free of charge. You can invite your catechist everybody you know can come in um, I believe we're going to record it as well for for later viewing and we as we have a, a number of things um, coming down the pike for your ongoing formation but if there's any particular topic that you feel that you know this would be really nice um, to to sit with for a little while please let me know and we'll line it up for this year okay okay my friends well thank you again for your time I appreciate it um, love you all, and thank you so much um, for your time today. Uh, so let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, God bless you, everybody. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.